There's a lot of woven wall hangings around that you might have seen that have fringe in the wall hanging, not just hanging off the bottom. And I want to show you how to do that. I've added a little band of white right here because I want my fringe not to cover up too many of my stripes and my rectangles. So I have some leftover long strands from my fringe at the bottom. And I'm just going to take those long strands and I'm going to halve them and cut and then I'm going to halve them again and cut. I'm just going to be working with short strands. So just like we did our long fringe, I'm just going to pick up three strands and I think I'm going to put them along here, maybe just part of the way. I'm going to start with my end two warp threads. I'm going to lift it to tighten it and then pull it down. And don't worry if it covers things up here because we're going to give it a really good trim at the end. I'm just using this white yarn because I had it left over, but you could use any color that you want. So remember we're going to kind of fold them, find the halfway point, put that on top of the two that we're working with, and then one side and the other side, just pulling right through the middle, up and down. You can just continue adding fringe until it's as long as you want. I'm just going to do it to about here. And I will be doing two rows, so I'm going to show you a little bit of a different technique before you add the second row. And there I've finished my last one. I'm happy with just having this much. So now I'm going to grab my needle and yarn and I'm just going to plain weave or tabby weave just one line this way and back because it ends up being a lot shorter, especially if I trim it shorter and it's going to hold everything in place really well so they won't come out. Just going to go to the end of the knot, so under here and then back. And then I'll weave in this end again. And then I'm going to add my next row of raya. I'm still going to do the alternates just like I did on the bottom because I could stack it on top of each other but I want it to fill those gaps in between. I don't want to see these knots on the bottom. I'll just push this up. One of my favorite parts of this process is the cutting of the raya because I love to make cool shapes and angles and all kinds of things. Use a really sharp pair of scissors and think before you cut because once you've cut, if you don't like it, it's probably a bit too late. Find a way that's really comfortable for you to cut your fringe and so that you can see it really well. And I'm just gonna prop mine up with this ball of yarn. I'm gonna start by just cutting off the loose fringe and just evening up the bits hanging down and then I'm just going to start from one side. I might even just do a little angle up on the side, I like that. So it has a little bit of a curve. Sometimes I really like my fringe to be super, super, super flat. So don't tell my daughter, but I have used her hair straightener before and it's quite safe as long as it's not too, too hot. If you can control the temperature, you can put it on there and, and straighten out all the kinks in your yarn. So I'm really happy with how that looks. You can carry on and finish your weaving with more raya and different shapes, more triangles, more squares. Just remember that every time that you do a little patch of raya that you lock it in with some plain weave in between each row of raya and then afterwards before you start planning some new shapes. Continue working on your piece, working from the bottom up, but just make sure to stop about two or two and a half inches from the nails. We're gonna need that extra little bit of length to tie off the ends to make the loops to hang it on a dowel. You probably finished your weaving and you're wondering how to take it off the loom. I have one that I finished earlier and I wanna show you how to take it off this nail loom. We're gonna take the bottom loops off first so you can lift up your fringe 
and take out your piece of cardboard. And then we're just gonna really carefully take these loops of all the nails. I'm just gonna cut this first one close to the nail, just like that. Be very careful, don't handle it too much. Just gently take those loops off each nail. This little nail got bent, okay. So we have that. And I'm just gonna start by knotting the ends, this end first, before I take the other end off. I'm gonna take the loose one and this one and make them one. And I'm just gonna do an overhand knot. And it's gonna be a little bit more challenging because we didn't have as much space on the bottom as on the top, but you'll still be able to do it. Just like that. And now you're just gonna do every single individual loop. You'll see I'm just pushing the first stitches of the heading up a little bit. It gives me a tiny bit more space, but it also closes those little openings along the bottom. And then for this last one, we have that loose end and I'm just gonna make that one with this loop. Now we can carefully take the top ones off the nails in the exact same way. I'm going to cut the end ones close to the nail. So this time, this end one, actually going to weave that back in to the back of our piece. So we're going to leave that one out. And at the other end, we're going to leave that out. And I'm going to start by knotting all of these just like I did before and try and make your knot nice and close to the top of those stitches. Now that we've finished tying all these loops on the top, we're gonna to have these two loose ends that we need to take care of. So I'm gonna show you two different options for those. The first one is to weave it in. So I'm gonna thread my needle. You don't have a lot of yarn to work with, so I'm actually just gonna bring it from the other direction and just through a couple of stitches right here. Just like that and that should hold it pretty well. Now your other option is to take this one and just simply tie it around the base of the other one. Around that bottom knot. Just like that. And then trim it. All that we have left to do now is grab our dowel for hanging and we're going to put it through these loops right here and tie on a bit of yarn and then we'll be ready to hang it. And we're just going to thread the dowel through all these loops. And I wanna put them through the loops with the loops all in the same direction. So I'm picking them up and the furthest away side of that loop is going on the top of the dowel. You could also thread it on a branch or any kind of stick. And all we have left to do is add a little bit of string here, maybe some neon yarn, and then it's ready to hang. Let's take a look at the back. Some of the pieces when we started our rows of weaving, we wove them in and I've cut some of those down quite short. Other pieces I've woven through a couple of stitches in the back, the ones that we just left loose. I'm just gonna show you how to do that. I have this one long strand right here and you can simply thread a needle and then just find a couple of stitches underneath where that's coming out and just go down through them like that and trim it. And the others I've already done. And you can just go through and trim these down. I haven't done that just yet. Here's what it looks like all done. I love it. You have the option here of trimming this bottom. I kind of like it a bit crazy on the bottom and then super, super neat up here. But you can cut it. You could even take a layer, a top layer, and trim that shorter or trim a different shape into that and then keep the bottom long. It's entirely up to you but I kind of like it a little bit raggedy on the bottom. I used some of those same methods and techniques in a couple of my other weavings and I'll show you those as an example. This weaving that I've done here is made entirely out of raya knots and I've just grouped them together quite tightly in different colors and it looked totally crazy when I was done but then I created 
this different texture by cutting them all at different lengths. And it works really well and I think it looks really cool. And this other one, I used the triangles and I just did a basic triangle where I added on from the bottom and then filled in each little space with another triangle and then finishing with a white band on the top. And I think it looks pretty effective. You should be so excited now you've probably finished your weaving and you're feeling really confident with building your own loom and weaving some basic shapes some stripes and adding that fringe. So now you can go ahead and do lots of really cool things with basic shapes, add fringe everywhere and make your own statement with your weaving.